Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. My special guest today is an extraordinary woman who is a very successful entrepreneur, and she is the founder and publisher of the very popular Pacific Edge magazine. She is Naomi Hazelton, and today we are going beyond magazines. Hey, Naomi. Hi, Rusty. Great to see you. Thank you for having me today. Good to see you. You know, you're so busy. I don't know how you do what you do, but you're always all over the place. I see you everywhere. Absolutely. I love people, yep. and I love being in different places at different times. And <laughs> when you're an entrepreneur, as you know, you have to hustle. <laughs> <laughs> and you hustle. I do, and I love it. And I wear these great shoes oh, while yeah. I do no, it. <laughs> those, are, those are flashy. <laughs> now, Naomi, tell me about your youth. Where did you grow up at? Well, thanks for asking. I actually grew up in Sausalito, California, and then my parents moved to Mill Valley, and they put me in swim lessons at age six and swam for the Mill Valley Swim Club um, until eight. And then at eight, we moved to Kauai. Wow. And uh, we lived in Lihui. And um, I went to a small Catholic school uh, and then went to Waimea Canyon for okay. seventh and eighth grade, which was amazing. Uh, and then went to Kauai High from ninth grade to, um, to my 12th grade year. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about, you know, Growing up on Kauai as a local Holly girl. <laughs> so when you were in school, what did you want to be when you grew up? That's a really good question. You know, I th when I was in school in college, I wanted to be a newscaster. Ah. Um, as a young child, I just loved performing and dancing and doing puppet shows and singing. So I don't really think... At this point, when I look back, I knew what I wanted to do. It yeah. wasn't until later in life. So you're always outgoing. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. But there's times, you know, when any extrovert yeah. needs a little time to themselves. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, there are absolutely times when I definitely just uh, need my own time. But for the most part, yes. So what college did you go to and what did you study? So my father grew up in Minnesota and he... Um, grew up going to Catholic schools, and so he went to a Jesuit school, yeah. and I know you went to a Catholic school as well. Yeah. And so I actually used to lectern with him, oh, wow. um, and so he took me to, we went on tours, and that was a beautiful thing, traveling with my father. So we went to look at Gonzaga and Seattle University and UW, and then we went to USD, and so I'd applied to UW. Huskies, right? Yeah. And then at the very last minute, University of San Diego said, oh, we've accepted you. And so I thought, hmm, surf and warm weather <laughs> or very cold weather. And so I chose USD, and I'm so glad that I did. It was an amazing experience. So, Naomi, what was your first job that you officially had? I was 16, and I worked at Kalaheo Steakhouse, and I was a busser, yeah. and I loved it. And I, it was, it's, you know, Kalaheo is a small town, so you would see everybody you, you grew up with, and, uh, you know, it was kind of like waiting on family, yeah. and, oh, what can I get you, or you want some more iced tea, <laughs> you know? So it was, a, it was a great time, and it really gave me um, the ability to, to stay focused and to move quickly and to look at very, various moving pieces um, as it relates to dining and working with the bartenders and the servers. And I loved it. It was a great experience, great experience. So let's talk about your family, uh, your mom and dad and your sister. Tell me about them. So my mom and dad actually met when they were 25. Okay. And mom worked for the American Red Cross and dad was um, a physical therapist and it was during Vietnam. So he enlisted and went into the Navy. And um, mom and dad met while he was emceeing a Navy ball um, in Japan. And they were friends for a very long time. And then they got engaged in Japan under a, under a beautiful bridge. Nice. And um, while they were on the water, he rode her out there. Uh, it was so, so romantic. <laughs> and um, so then they got married um, where she grew up, and they lived there for a while. So mom, um, one of the things about mom that has really... Um, help me be who I am today is that she left Santa Barbara where she went to school 
uh, I think she was 17 or 18, and drove to the South on her own and worked for Dr. Martin Luther King. Wow. And the story she shared with me uh, will live with me forever. She's an amazing woman, a super brave woman. Well, you know, I can see how their impact on you was tremendous because you're amazing, Naomi. And, you know, you're, in, you're inspiring to so many people. I mean, a lot of business people I know admire who you are and what you do. Now, speaking of that, can you tell me about Element Media? Absolutely. Element Media is, it's my baby, yeah. um, along with my son, who's actually out there as well. He's, he's no longer a baby, but I think he'll always be a baby <laughs> in my eyes. And so Element Media really started out, um, I went to graduate school at HPU. Yeah. And they, I'm very right-brained. Um, I have analytical thinking as well, but I tend to go more towards the creative outlets in life. And so they said, Naomi, you have a choice. You can do a thesis or a practicum. So I went right to the practicum, which became a project. And what I did is I put myself through college by uh, really starting to work with um, new publications in the state of Hawaii. So I would help set up distribution, do the advertising sales. And what I loved about that is the people that I met along the way. So I looked at Hawaii Business and PBN, very long-standing publications, and I thought, wow, no one's featuring the young entrepreneurs, the, the, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the inspiration, the motivation, and the innovation behind why these young Hawaii entrepreneurs do what they do and why they did it. And so Pacific Edge Magazine started out as my practicum, and I presented it to the faculty, and they pulled me outside and they said, Hey, Naomi, have you thought about maybe taking a step forward and making this a business? And I said, sure. How hard could it be? <laughs> <laughs> and here we are today. Um, and so there's many moving pieces that go along to that story and that puzzle. Well, I love hearing that. And, you know, so I want to ask you, Naomi, tell me more about Pacific Edge magazine. I love your Pacific Edge magazine, and Thank it's a you. quarterly magazine, right? It is. It is. So Pacific Edge magazine was really about featuring the motivation and the inspiration behind why Hawaii's entrepreneurs, you know, started and why they do what they do. So I take someone like Robbie Opa or Rob Iopa, and he works for, he is the owner of WCIT Architecture, born and raised in Hilo. Um, just an amazing man, and he infuses the, you know, the Hawaiian culture within what he does through his design and, and through you know, his reach. And this was 14 years ago when he first started, and now I think he's in the top five in, in the architecture world. Wow. Um, or someone even like, uh, I think, you know, Tom Park. You know, of bar leather apron of and course. leather sole. And these, these two gentlemen, and, and they're amazing. And the way they started and their vision just really moved me to let other readers know, hey, if they can do it, so can you. Yeah. <laughs> and just take that leap of faith and just make it happen. And so it was about inspiring other people in the state of Hawaii to become whatever it is that they wanted to be. Yeah, no, I love that. And I love Tom Park, too, because he's such a great guy, such a successful businessman. Mm -hmm. um, you are a great people person. You love connecting people. You love building relationships with people. Yeah. Tell me more about why you love people so much. People inspire me. Uh, I'm the type of person that I would prefer to listen and hear what you have to say. And then I absorb it. So yeah. I take it in and then it never leaves my mind. I love reading, don't get me wrong, but I haven't done it in quite some time. I did read some, some of your book, yeah. not all of your book, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Um, however, when I can have a moment or an hour with you and really understand what makes you tick, what is it that makes you super passionate about why you do? What can you share with me that... I may need to grow in the future. That is what I love. And so when I know what you need and I know what somebody else needs, I get jazzed and excited <laughs> about saying, hey, Rusty, I would love for you to meet Reg Baker yeah. because maybe you can have a television show, <laughs> but that already happened. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the connecting and seeing other people benefit and being happy about it. 
Yeah, no, I love that. And you also do quarterly networking social events. I and do. And it's very successful. Tell me about that. They are so much fun. So the whole emphasis actually started 14 years ago when we started our first issue of Pacific Edge magazine. Okay. And I looked at the features, the advertisers, and the readers, and I said, I'd love for them to connect, right? So because Pacific Edge started out as a networking tool. Yeah. So we would feature the young entrepreneur, and then we'd place their phone number, their email, and sometimes even their address. Yeah. And some people would come to me and say, hey, are they free? Are they single? And I'm like, well, we're not doing a dating magazine here. It's strictly business. But it became a networking tool. So the bigger picture was let's connect the general public, the advertisers, and the features so that they can build and grow and get to know each other and build each other's businesses. So the first one was at the Hano Hano Room oh. with Flash, who oh, was yeah. on your show. <laughs> and it was amazing. You know, Maleko was up there emceeing, and we had all these booths that we... Um, that we had rented and it was just, uh, it was socializing on the front end and networking on the back end. And I wanted it to be that way. So it wasn't like, oh, Rusty, how are you doing? <laughs> How's everything going? It's more like, hey, Rusty, what's going on? You yeah. know, tell me about yourself. Sure. And that's how business is done today. Yeah. Well, last month you had a networking event that I was at. It was honoring the women in business and it was a fantastic event at the Mission Houses. Tell me more about that. Thank you. I appreciate that. So everything we do as it relates to Pacific Edge Magazine's events are cutting edge, fresh, hip, new. And so we move the locations every single issue. So this was at the Mission House Museum lawn, and we had had it there prior. And what I decided I wanted to do is have it tented. Um, we had a separate VIP room in the actual um, the uh, the um, so sorry the gift shop yeah and then we turned the Mission House museums into speakeasies and I know. so it was really <laughs> lovely in that you know you had the opportunity to taste some good scotch or some good bourbon thanks to Johnson Brothers yes yes um, and and I thought you know let's mix in the feminine and the masculine not that women don't enjoy a good Johnny Walker or whatever they drink, but I thought it would be nice to have those two entities come together. And then we worked with Mud Hen and we did vegetarian food and we know uplit it and we had cars and we had stations where Dry Bar came in and massage and we made it interactive. And again, that's about connecting. Yeah. And uh, just fun, a good time. Oh, it was, it was awesome. I had a great time and it, it was like a sold out event and really look forward to the next one that, that you're going to have as well now. As an entrepreneur, what do you see is the biggest difference in you today versus you 10 years ago? Wow, that is an amazing question. The biggest difference in me right now is that I really have learned to take some time and allow things to unfold. Back then, 14 years ago, you know, I never knew what it was like to pick the low-hanging fruit. So in 2008, when 48 magazines folded in the state of Hawaii, we were growing. Yeah. And it was because I was very, very, very creative and tenacious, and, and partnerships were a huge key of that. However, today, it's more along the lines of don't force it, let it unfold, and give yourself, Naomi, a little time to be more creative and to think about what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. Because print's changing. So 14 years ago, it was stepping stones and getting there. And now it's let it unfold and see where you're going to go next. Yeah. No, I mean, it's interesting to see how things are changing and you have to adapt and adjust to the changing times. Yeah. Naomi, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond magazines. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Naomi Hazelton. We will be back in a quick minute. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. <laughs> Help, help. 
Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is the founder and publisher of the very popular Pacific Edge magazine. She is Naomi Hazelton, and today we are going beyond magazines. Naomi, you know, what are the biggest challenges that you're dealing with in owning these magazines? That's a great question. You know, when we first started Pacific Edge magazine, print was flourishing. And then we took on Vacations Hawaii's in-flight magazine through yeah. Bill Smith. And then we purchased Green Magazine Hawaii, which is the voice of sustainability, a phenomenal publication and product. And we were flourishing and growing. And what I see today is not that we're not still in the game. However, video has come up. YouTube has come up. Um, generating content has um, been a huge integral part of our new process. And so we launched a new brand. I launched a new vision called Beyond the Edge. And it's a series of video interviews, a series of events that are just strictly pauhanas, no platform, no let's meet all these amazing leaders, just having a good time. And then a series of newsletters, no, newsletters that are kind of hip and cool. So Pacific Edge is more Bishop Street, yep. and Beyond the Edge is more Kaka'ako in Chinatown. And so it's looking forward to the future and seeing what does this new generation want? What are they viewing? And it is video. It is what's happening right now. Yeah. No, that's interesting to see. And I know about you being part of Pacific Century Fellows, but can you share more about that? It was one of the most amazing experiences I had in my life. And meeting the 30 plus cohorts, I think there were 35 of us total, um, we had the ability every month to meet different leaders in different industry, from agriculture to hospitality and tourism. One of the most phenomenal experiences of my life was spending the night on the USS Vincent, um, which, is, which was an amazing aircraft carrier. And it gave me huge perspective into the freedom that we have and these young men and women that are really day and night, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. sometimes, you know, fighting for our, our freedom and protecting us. And it was beautiful, yeah. beautiful experience. Yeah, no, that's great to hear. I mean, the military, I mean, when you see it up close and personal like that, I mean, you have a whole new appreciation of what they do. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about my book, Beyond the Lines. I know you're working on it. Yes. What are you liking about it so far? Well, you talk about leadership. Yeah. And, you know, leadership is a very broad term. However, for every individual that is a leader, there's growing yeah. and there's experience. And, you know, I think in your context, winning so many games and being so proficient in what you do, and then, you know, for you now, taking that leap of faith and writing a book is really what's profound to me. Yeah. And that experience in itself is amazing. And you know, you went from leadership and yet you're a leader again in a different way and meeting other leaders. And it's hard to write a book. <laughs> oh geez, it's not easy. I know the writer's block. <laughs> yeah. Now Naomi, in my book, I talk about welcoming adversity and looking forward to challenges. Yeah. What's, what's a major adversity that you have to overcome in your life? Well, major adversity that I had to overcome in my life would be starting a business in general. Yeah. I knew nothing about business. Sure, how hard can it be? There's so many moving pieces. And so I had to learn along the way. And then as we grew, I learned to actually have courage and ask for help and ask for mentors. And so the adversity really for me in the broadest scale of things is that I went into it completely not knowing a thing. Yeah. The unknown. And you know what you just said there, the greatest leaders, I mean, they don't know it all. And yeah. they have the courage to ask people, you know, to help them. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, your team, your people will respect that from you as the leader as well. Absolutely. I don't know it all. None of us do. <laughs> <laughs> now, you were talking a little about risk, you know, yeah. starting your business. Tell me how important risk is when you're in, in order to achieve success. It's everything. 
you have to get out of your mind and say, I have the courage to do this and I believe in myself. And I believe to think is to create. Just think about it. Know it. You'll get there. Don't worry about how you're going to get there. To think is to create. Just go for it. And if you fail, you fail. And if you fail, then you learn. Yeah. And if you don't fail, you don't grow. And that's what being a human is about. Completely agree. I agree with you, Naomi. Now, what do you feel is your purpose in life? Oh, Rusty, that's a great <laughs> question. My purpose in life is really to see other people perpetuate and grow. So if I can help them collectively together by making an introduction, and they can then grow in different ways or together through business, professionally, personally, then my job is done here on earth. Yeah, I love hearing that. Now, people define success in so many different mm -hmm. ways. I want to know, Naomi, how do you define success? There's a lot going through my brain right now. <laughs> yeah. Success to me is really getting out of your comfort zone and really knowing as you do that who you truly are and being vulnerable, being open, not this persona of who I am and what I do. What really matters? What can I share with you? Can we have a real conversation as business owners? And so for me, success is being vulnerable and truly knowing who you are. And once you know that, you know what you can do and how you can become even better. And especially for people in this world. I like that. Be real and yeah. speak the truth. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> now, what do you feel is the best advice, most valuable mm. advice you've ever received in your life? I know that instantaneously. So my father, when I worked for him, um, when I was 20, 21, 22, he called me into his office and he's a physical therapist. Yeah. And he was um, going through some checks and one of the insurance companies had paid him $5 more. And he said to me, hey, darling, I just want you to know that this insurance company paid me $5 more and I want to take the time and send it back to them. And he said, know this, what does it profit a man to own the whole world but to lose his soul? It doesn't matter if it's one penny or it's $50. What matters is you do the right thing. And that is, you know, that's huge to me. Everything we do, we need to look and say, are we doing the right thing? Does it feel right? Is it right? And that's, that's, yeah, that's always stuck with me. It's all about integrity and ethics. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, which is a big discussion today. Yeah. So, Naomi, what, what do you do to continue to improve and better yourself? I, for the first time, started taking time for myself. I had this perception that I always had to say yes. Um, sure, I'll do everything and anything for you. Um, I will take that additional phone call or I will be there at 8 a.m. for you and, and whatever that means. And I think that there's balance in that. And so for me personally, I've started to take, to take the time for myself. Even if that's just sitting down and decompressing and taking time to read your book, that is really important. Yeah, I love hearing that. And I want to know, Naomi, who is someone that inspires you? Oh, my mom, you know, having the courage at, you know, as a, as a, you know, 18, 19 year old um, and driving to the South. And um, she shared with me that she was in a burning church during that time. And she didn't know if she was going to get out. And the fact that, that she was there fighting for human rights. Um, during Martin Luther during King. During Martin Luther King. Well, during, yeah, during the civil rights movement. Yeah. Um, that's really inspirational to me because people matter all over the world. And it doesn't matter what we do. It's really who we are. And that's why we're put on earth is to help people. Yeah. That's our greatest gift. And so she really inspired me by having the courage to do that and standing out. Yeah, no, that's great to hear. I mean, we want more people to have courage to do the yeah. right thing. Yeah. yeah. People are people. Yeah. Naomi, what is something about you that mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know about? When I was 24, I ran for Miss Kauai, and uh, I was in drama um, at the time prior to that. And so I did a monologue, 
and it was about a woman in an extremely abusive relationship. And um, so I took the title uh, later on because Miss Kauai um, decided to let go of her crown. And so what that did is it helped me go to HPU. Oh. And so that financial scholarship gave me the opportunity to start graduate school. And so a lot of people don't know that. I don't share that. But it was a phenomenal opportunity for me. Yeah. Yeah, it was no. great. Love hearing that. Yeah, it was fun. Naomi, who is someone that really impacted you and helped you in business? I would say my business partner, Jamie, uh, he was an amazing leader. Um, he taught me to really look at the strategic aspect of things and not get your, let your emotions get in the way, um, but then also allowed me to have intuition and gut. And so he taught me a lot about business and a lot about myself and set up all the strategic you know, um, platforms that we have. And, and uh, he, he inspired me a lot. He was... He was a very amazing business person. Yeah. Yeah. How long, how long ago did you guys start the business together? It, we started in 2005 in a small little house that we were renting on a desk. And uh, we had our, yeah, that, that's a whole nother ball of wax, but that was a long time ago. It was great. It was All fun. right. Now, Naomi, whether it be personally or mm -hmm. professionally, what's something that you want to do, but you just haven't done yet? Can I say a few things? Oh, yeah. I want to do the rough water swim because oh. growing up swimming, I've always wanted to do that. And I'd love to do, I'd love to swim all over the world. And then I'd love to be a food critic. So I'd love to travel all over the world and eat amazing food and I guess blog about it, yeah. Instagram about it, and then swim after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, th I think you would be fantastic, uh, you know, doing the food thing. I oh, mean, I would love traveling that. the world, tasting all the food, writing about it in a magazine. That would be fantastic. It would be amazing. And to have the courage to do it independently. Yeah. That's a big, you know, that's a big step. So. Yeah. <laughs> now, Naomi, before we wrap, I want to know, what's a future goal of yours? A future goal of mine is actually to get out of the office and go virtual. Yeah. And today, as long as the magazines happen and the videos get produced and the content is created and we're all working together collectively, that can happen. So I, I see that happening within the next year, and I'm excited for that. Now, Naomi, I love hearing that. I mean, I know you have probably tons of goals, but thank you for sharing that one. Yeah. So what's something, I mean, we're going to wrap soon, but mm -hmm. what's upcoming for you now for your magazine? Is there an, a networking event that's coming up? Absolutely. Yeah, actually, we have a couple. So we have an event at Dry Bar. Okay. Um, and it'll be at International Marketplace on the 26th of June. And then we're going to do a Beyond the Edge event at Oto Rico off of Kapiolani yeah. next to 24-Hour Fitness. And then um, our Leaders in Healthcare issue. Actually, in that issue, we're featuring Glenn Medeiros of nice. St. Louis Schools, Kua'i cool Man. Yeah. Um, and so in that, with that issue, we're featuring a bunch of amazing leaders and entrepreneurs. Um, Kaylin of Premier Barbershop being one as well. And that's at Saks Fifth Avenue, and that's on September 4th. And then we have our Business Achievement Awards Gala, which is August 21st at the Kahala Hotel. Self-nominations are recommended, and we have six independent judges. So I have nothing to do with the scoring process and who the finalists are, but it's an amazing evening to recognize the Young Professional of the Year, small business owner, family-run business. So you should apply. You should nominate. <laughs> You'd be perfect. Well, we'll see what happens. Yes, we will see what happens. <laughs> Naomi, thank you so much for sharing all of your insights today. Thank you. You know, you are someone that definitely go beyond the lines. I mean, you're very respected, such an, I mean, very successful business person here in Hawaii. Loved it. Loved your insights today. Thank you for having me, Rusty. Thank you, Naomi. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii and a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com and my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. And I, th I hope that Naomi and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. <laughs>